Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you how to make your own little toy matchbox car, Hot Wheels car garage. Um, a while back, um, I noticed my kids were making uh, little tunnels and things uh, out of Legos and Mega Blocks to play with these cars. Because, you know, what kid doesn't like these little toy cars? I'm sure uh, yours do as well, as I did when I was a kid. But uh, I figured why not make something a little more dedicated and uh, permanent, and uh, this is what it came up with and it's all plywood construction but as you can see it has a nice little ramp which is always fun it has a little gas pump uh, a car wash which was an afterthought while i was waiting for some glue to dry and then um, it has three bays where you can pull in a little hot wheels car um, but uh, my kids got in on building it and even my wife did all the uh, lettering as you see there and it looks really nice um, but my kids really love this thing. They uh, first thing in the morning they uh, start playing with cars, and uh, so that makes me feel good. And you know, hopefully this thing lasts a long time. I think it will. Maybe uh, when they get a little older, it'll go into the basement until they move out of the house and have kids of their own. Who knows? But uh, it's a fun little thing, and it was fun to build with them. And it was very cheap to make as well, because a lot of the stuff you might already have lying around your house. Um, so let's get into how it's made so the final product is uh, as you see here it's built from one uh, two by two sheet of plywood that was three eighths of an inch thick um, and this is a uh, or sheathing and it's uh, this is really cheap stuff um, I think you can get like a, a four foot by eight foot sheet for like 20 bucks at Home Depot and they'll even cut it up for you but from that one two by two sheet I cut everything and uh, so before I got started, though, I had to kind of sketch out what I wanted, and my main focus was just the garage. Um, and I wanted something that they could park cars on top and have a ramp, and then I thought it'd be neat if they could just pull cars in like you do at uh, Jiffy Lube or a uh, repair shop. So the tools that I used in uh, building this thing uh, basically were a speed square, a regular square. Um, the main tool you're going to use is this saw, and it's a Japanese-style uh, saw that cuts on the pull stroke. Um, really handy thing to have around. A coping saw to help cut the uh, carports out um, and uh, those are like 10 bucks I think and then I did use a dovetail saw a little bit this is not necessary you can get by with the Japanese saw but a couple of them wanted to make sure I was straight. Um, a lot of clamps if you have them if not don't worry Walmart's around so, and Amazon even has them real cheap now too. A hand plane you don't have to have, but it can really come in handy for making sure they're all the same height. And then I did use a little uh, compass to transfer an angle on the ramp. Um, and then uh, this is the glue I used, the only glue I used. It's uh, construction adhesive from Gorilla Glue. I had that little uh, tube sitting around. Um, and you can't forget your trusty tape measure and then also uh, some paints and paint brushes, that kind of stuff. But that's really all I used outside of, uh, you know, my workbench and uh, vices, stuff like that. So I'm starting out from a four foot long sheet of plywood that's uh, two foot wide. And my first step was just to cut that down the middle. But I'm also drawing essentially my cut list onto this thing. And uh, you can get this as well as everything else uh, for free at our website, growitbuildit.com. I will put a link in the description so you can go download that image and actually see, you know, how I laid this out and then cut it up because if you lay it out all at once it makes life a lot easier um, but uh, the first step is basically going to be to just rip this thing down the middle so I can uh, get it into a, a two foot by two foot section um, because you can buy uh, sheets of plywood from like Home Depot that are two by two um, I'm not sure about the thickness this was three eighths inch thick uh, plywood uh, but otherwise I'm still drawing a little bit on my cutting up uh, list there but it's just get to work, start cutting it up. Um, the Japanese saw is really nice for this because you can almost go horizontal as you're pulling it and just keep your curve, uh, you know, stay to your line really, really well. It cuts pretty fast. It's got hardened teeth. Um, I pull this thing out a lot, even when I just have to make a random cut on like a two by four or something. Um, it's easier than digging out the miter saw and worrying about dust collection and all that. You know, you can just if you can get the job done and you know 90 seconds or two minutes which is this then go ahead I mean if you're on full on production mode that's different now if you have a table saw or a band saw or even just a handheld electric jigsaw at your disposal that will make this whole job a lot easier but if you don't 
and you don't mind a little bit of sweat equity, I mean, this is a very cheap way to uh, do this, and you don't generate the dangerous dust. So, um, you know, it's and it's also kind of fun because I can let my kids uh, use the saws here and there, and uh, I don't really have to worry about them cutting a finger off. You know, I, I worry about them cutting themselves, but not actually losing a digit. But just take your time when you're doing this stuff, and uh, uh, try to hold to your line and try to hold plumb as best you can, so that your, uh, you know, your cut is square. But, um, yeah, it, this was probably the most tedious part of the process, just cutting pieces. And, you know, since I'm the designer as well, you're always second-guessing and checking your stuff and making sure your sketch looks right and your parts look like they should and so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, these saws, they do make quick work of just about everything. Um, I really recommend you, if you don't have one, you might want to consider picking it up just for odd jobs because they're pretty nice to have around. Um, I yeah I'll put a link down for that too. Um, but um, once you get all your pieces cut, or really I'm just roughing them out too at this point. I'm not actually uh, these aren't finished pieces, but uh, because I'll have to trim some of them up a little bit. But I need to try to make sure they're all the same height. Um, that way the roof is going to sit relatively flat on there. And you can see three pieces are definitely higher than the others. And so there's a few ways you can handle this. What I'm doing is I'm holding them kind of flat on the table, and then I'm just going to clamp them into a vise and start sanding them. Um, if in, you know this can happen to you, unless pretty much with any tool, unless you're using a well-tuned table saw. Um, but uh, anyways, if you don't have a hand plane, you can just take a piece of sandpaper, wrap it around a scrap piece of two by four, and get to work. And it may take you 20, 30 minutes to do this, depending on how out they are. But you can sand it down with a 80 grit or 60 grit uh, sandpaper relatively quickly. Um, but uh, if you do have a hand plane at your disposal, I highly suggest you make use of it. Um, if you don't, don't go buy one for this project because new hand planes always need a lot of work to make them work right. But um, and hand planing on using a plane on plywood is not easy anyways. But this will get the job done, uh, and it'll do it a lot faster than sanding. So once you get them flat enough to where you'll be able to force the roof on with a little bit of uh, weight, you're pretty much done And uh, at, as far as getting the height uh, correct. Now you may have to do a little more detail work in uh, trimming them up, which that doesn't take too much time. But, uh, you know, this is when I say this is the most tedious part of the process, it is. And I'm just trying to cut these things as fast as I can. Um, once you've got all your main pieces cut, you can lay them out for a little fit up just to see how everything's going to go together. And also throw a couple of matchbox cars in there to make sure that they're going to fit um, before you get too much further along. But uh, this is going to be the main frame. That uh, middle support isn't just to uh, you know help hold the roof up. It's also uh, to make sure that you can't throw the car all the way through that thing. Um, you could make it all the way through, make like a tunnel or whatnot, but... Uh, for whatever reason, I chose not to do that. But uh, anyways, now we got to cut the carports in, and this is like the only other part that you know you got to take your time with. And I actually used a car to try to lay out where I was going to be cutting. And then uh, at this point, though, I did I was able to get my son involved too here pretty quick. But uh, um, essentially, this is where you're going to use your coping saw the only time you will. But uh, first, we're going to cut try to cut as straight down as we can because we don't have much like you can't screw this one up you don't have much uh, space on each side of the carport for this piece so it really has to be uh, pretty much true and straight just so it doesn't look you know bad but uh, once you get that done you're going to use your uh, coping saw and uh, uh, these they always take a little bit of getting used to um, if you haven't used one much but they basically slide down your kerf and then as you're cutting you can turn the saw it's it's kind of like uh, think of it like an analog version of a scroll saw so to speak but uh, they're really nice um, they allow you to make strange cuts you know like if this was a solid piece of wood like uh, you could use a chisel and whatnot to chop that whole piece out but uh, since it isn't, and it's plywood, um, it's best to use a coping saw. And there's my little son's hand there, uh, getting in on the action. So that always makes you real proud and happy. Um, but uh, so the carports, though, you got to be uh, 
you know, you, you want to make sure that those are correct, um, just so they don't look stupid and you don't make the piece too weak to be useful. Um, and uh, also, uh, I haven't talked about this, but plywood will splinter out on you quite a bit. Where you'll, you know, you'll have uh, sharp corners. You, it's easy to get splinters. So it's a good idea to take sandpaper or just a file and uh, remove any uh, loose pieces of wood. Um, you know, little kids' hands are going to be all over this thing, so you want to make sure that they're not going to get poked and prodded and whatnot. Um, and again, if you got kids and they're big enough to help you, get them in the shop to uh, let them help you because uh, it's valuable and it's fun, and uh, hopefully they'll remember it for the rest of their life. And, you know, it's kind of every minute of experience you can give them in using tools and stuff and seeing what you do and how you do it you know they're going to absorb it so much better than an adult will and uh yeah it's uh it's valuable so um but uh there was one other tool i didn't mention that i used is it's called a combination square uh, a lot of you probably already know what that is if you don't you ought to get one because they are extremely handy for uh doing that kind of layout work like we just did um after that, we just got to cut out the two carports on the front of the uh, garage, and we'll do that in the exact same way with uh, cutting straight down on the sides and then using the coping saw. Um, but take your time here, just like with everything else, and it should turn out fine. And the lower you clamp your board in the vise, too, um, the less wobble you're going to get, uh, which is important, especially when you got this little guy running the saw. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, just, I can't stress enough when you're using hand tools to take your time. Um, don't rush it because that's where everything looks bad and you have to start over or cut a new piece out or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so uh, w once this happens, though, I mean, we're pretty much ready to uh, figure out, you know, what we're going to do for a ramp and uh, that kind of stuff. Now, I've, in the plans I said I have on my website, um, they are uh, dimensioned to my final dimension. So it, what's there is exactly what I did build. Um, so if you're just trying to recreate what I did. Now, initially, I did want to put an extra support piece for where the ramp was going to go. Um, just because I was afraid that the uh, plywood would flex a lot if someone were to press on it um, a lot or something like that. Which, I mean, it's very foreseeable that, you know, some kid's going to try to stand on your little car ramp made of plywood. So I thought whatever I could do to strengthen it would be a good thing. Um, after building this, I don't think that extra support piece was necessary at all. So even though it's shown in this video, I did not put it in the uh, plans at all because, I mean, 3 8 plywood was more than strong enough. Um, but uh, this is all that's left of our original 2x2 two two sheet now, and I'm just constantly stealing pieces from it, uh, cutting them out as I need them. Uh, to make other things to glue to that big base that we're going to have. Um, but uh, for the ramp, though, it, I was surprised at how strong that uh, piece was. It's only like, I don't know, I think six and a half inches long. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was uh, plenty stiff, though, to uh, support the weight of a lot, of, uh, a lot more than I thought, like with pretty much no flex. But now we got to figure out the angles. Now I did put the angles of uh, in the article uh, that I linked to for this, so you don't have to try to figure them out um, if you don't want to. But um, if you want them to be uh, perfect, then you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just putting a board there, and I put another board flat and trace, and that's where I figure out what my angles need to be, where I need to cut, so that it's a smooth transition from the ramp to the roof. Um, and for doing this, you know, you mark it up, use a square, and clamp it in a vise, and just cut at an angle. And this, when I keep saying take your time, I mean it. You got to make sure that you're going completely vertical on the saw, um, and just do your best, and move the board in the vise as you make your cut. So you may have to loosen the vise a couple of times and uh, cut some more to uh, uh, complete it, but... You know, this one turned out pretty square, and I was quite happy about it. Um, now, I did screw this up a little bit, though, is um, I cut the wrong way on the other end of the ramp. Whoops. So, uh, it's okay, though. I fixed it, which, here's my bad cut, which we'll see how it doesn't fit here in just a second. But, uh, you know, again, go slow. 
both hands on the saw, look at what you're doing, and uh, you know just check it when you're done to see if if it's square. It's, if it's not perfectly square, but it's good enough, then it's all right. We're not making fine furniture here. We're making Hot Wheels car garage. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, then I'm uh, making a mating surface for the ramp um, on the actual mainframe pieces for the uh, garage. And uh, so I cut down, I, I clamped the two boards together, the support piece that's not necessary, and the main piece, and just cut down them, and then uh, you know, just trim it out. And that actually turned out really well. Um, you know, first time ever having to try to do that. But um, you can see my error right there is I, anyone who's made a, you know, like a picture frame or something has done this too, probably, where they cut the miter joint wrong or, you know, done uh, molding or anything like that. So you just, you know, while your ramp's sitting there, you just mark it up what you need to do and clamp it in the vise and get to work. <clears throat> and, uh, Again, this saw makes quick work of it. You see how I almost go vertical with the saw. I'm actually on my knees doing that. But what I find is that it's very easy to establish your curve with your saw by barely cutting in. And then you can put the power to it and uh, just finish through the cut. It's, it seems to work better for me. Um, so the ramp works good. Now I'm going to paint all the pieces uh, with my little boy there. And he really, really enjoyed doing this. Like I was very surprised. But... Um, he had a lot of fun painting, but we're going to paint it before we glue it just because uh, if there are, if you do this, then you know that you'll be able to get everything visible red once you do glue it. Um, and then the inside of these pieces needs to be gray. Uh, well, doesn't need to be, but I figured that's what the inside of a service station should look like. Um, so... Uh, painting is actually kind of tedious too, but it only takes probably 10 minutes. But uh, anyways, now we're on to gluing. And so the Gorilla Glue construction adhesive, I've had this little tube for years, and I just kind of hoped that I would have enough to do this project, and I definitely did. Um, you know, so what's cool about this is you you can put it on painted surfaces, you can put it on metal. It it sticks to almost anything as long as it has the cure time and the clamping force. Um, so all I do is basically take a little bit and smear it on my finger and uh, I try to make it so I have like an opaque line so you know uh, thick enough where you can't see the uh, red color um, and I try to keep the edges a little thin so I reduce the squeeze out but you can see I'm gonna have squeeze out pretty much no matter what I do um, but the good news about the glue is you can paint it and so we'll just touch it up at the end and you'll never see the glue there anyways um, but uh, take your time here try to keep everything as square as you possibly can and it should turn out okay but um, anyways uh, you know if you're doing wood glue which a lot of you probably have used um, you know that uh, in like two hours it, it pretty much sets up where unless it really gets a force on it it's not going to move um, I kind of thought the construction adhesive would be the same thing and it wasn't so um, you can see me clamping it up here. This is like in the afternoon after I got home from work with my boy. Well, after he went to bed, I came back down and took all the clamps off and figured I could put all the other pieces on and then clamp those up uh, with, you know, not the same amount of pressure, but decent amount and not have anything move. Well, it did move. So I ended up having to kind of re-square everything up, which I wasn't happy about, but you live and learn. Um, but uh, take your time, try to keep everything as square as you can so it looks good in the end. And uh, clamps, clamps, clamps. Use your clamps. Borrow clamps. Um, these little bar clamps will apply more than enough force to hold it together uh, tight enough. And then you really just ha you have to leave the glue for a day, basically. Um, that's a little uh, gauge block I have that's uh, perfectly square, so I can throw it into interior corners and look down and just you know make sure I'm plumb and square so if you don't have one make one um, but uh, anyways you know clamp them up uh, increasing the pressure as you add clamps um, you know so start the first one be really light the next one be a little more and then at the end you kinda go back through and just really squeeze the heck out of all of them to make sure they're uh, as square as you can be but this thing is really solid though um, after this, we can actually uh, draw our notch onto uh, what we're going to cut out for the roof. That's what we're doing there. 
Um, you know, you can get dimensions for that kind of stuff, but it's easiest just to uh, use your physical pieces if you're able to figure out what material you need to remove. Um, and again, there's my uh, happy little Japanese saw that uh, does a whole lot of work in a short amount of time. Um, but, uh, oh, and again, that's a saw that kids can definitely use. So if it's a pretty easy cut to make, just let them go at it. Um, you know, they get excited about this stuff just like uh, the adults do too. Um, but uh, take your time on this kind of stuff, especially when trimming out a corner like that so you don't go too far. You don't want to have a big gash in the thing at the end. Um, now one of the trickier things was to actually, okay, I got my ramp, I got my roof. What kind of uh, uh, chamfer do I need to put on the roof and how can I do that without making it look bad? Because I don't want to cut a new piece of roof out of another piece of uh, uh, plywood. Um, but, you know, take your time to mark up that first angle and then it's a matter of keeping everything square and then cutting down with that uh, Japanese saw. Um, again, I'm going very steep in my angle there to uh, follow my curve line or my line I drew. I did screw this one up, so I just clamped the roof right down to my workbench and took a rasp and flattened it out a bit. So that was an unex unexpected thing, but um, you know, being able to uh, shore it up that way was fine. You could use sandpaper as well; it would just probably take longer. And then, in a combination of that, I figured out that my ramp actually ended up being a little too long, so I laid it down um, on my uh, plywood bench um, with the garage on the plywood base that it's going to get glued to. And just put the ramp down and I used another scrap of plywood to figure out exactly where I needed to trim my ramp to make it sit flush. That was a lot of words there so if you go back and watch the clip again you'll see what I did. Anyways though, um, test fit at the end and everything is looking pretty good and I'm ready to uh, start gluing everything else up. Um, so that's all going to sit flush. Again that extra support piece is not necessary. You don't need it. Um, before I glue the roof on though, I'm going to touch up any of my uh, glue squeeze out from earlier. And I'm also going to paint the base. Um, for this I had a can of gray floor, or it was gray paint, it was latex uh, paint and primer. I, I think we painted one of our rooms with it or something, I don't remember. Um, but I also had uh, an idea at this point too uh, for the car wash. I figured I'm going to have extra space on the uh, plywood base that the garage will sit on. Originally I figured we'd put paint like some roads on it and stuff like that, some tracks or something. Um, but I thought, well, why not make a little tunnel that we could call a car wash, which fits with the whole garage idea. So I just cut, you know, a handful of pieces out real quick that would uh, accept, you know, you could throw a matchbox car through it, no problem. Um, and it's just cut them up, square them up, glue them up. Uh, so not too complicated and obviously uh, clamp them up. Um, but... Uh, yeah, this worked out really good though, um, as a an afterthought that looks like it was uh, intended from the beginning, so to speak. But uh, um, yeah, this thing is solid though. I I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. I uh, well, I'll wait till the end to tell you. But basically, this thing took my daughter's entire body weight uh, recently uh, as glued to the base, so she was totally on it and it held. So that construction adhesive is good stuff. She's only 30 pounds, but, you know, little kids shift their weight a lot. Um, I figured I'd, it's a car wash. We'll give it a nice uh, little baby blue color or whatever shade of blue that is. And now before I glued stuff to the base, though, I wanted to get the lettering on. So my lovely wife has a great way of transferring lettering to something that you can then come back and trace with, like a paint pen or, or, or paint or something. Um, she basically prints letters out or prints words out that you want it to say backwards. Um, and I don't know why this works, but if it's fresh, you can put it on there, scribble with a pencil, and you've got a, a it, it's almost like a stencil. And then she just comes in and carefully uses a paint pen to uh, write the lettering on everything, and it really worked out really well. Um, you know, again, this is something you take your time with, uh, but we had a uh, fine point white Sharpie paint pen, which was very lucky. Uh, we didn't have to go buy one. We just I had it for a different reason from a long time ago, um, but uh, I thought the uh, the lettering actually added quite a bit of character to this little little thing. But uh, 
For the car wash, uh, I put the little uh, curtain that some car washes have, and I just took an old, you know, grocery plastic bag, single-use plastic bag. Ooh, bad, evil. Yep, I get that. Well, I'm repurposing one of them uh, for this. So I just gently cut out some strips on uh, into a little square I'd made, and then I just super glue it inside and. It's kind of cool. It just looks like something's actually coming out of a car wash. Um, but uh, nothing too scientific about this. And I figured just use super glue because the odds that this thing is going to survive a year, probably not that high. Like the little plastic thing I did. So I may have to redo it, which is okay. But uh, yeah, it looks good right now, though. Um, I don't know. I like that little addition. I thought it was kind of cool, kind of cute. But. Uh, for gluing the base down, I used a couple of scrap 1x2s and put those along the edges of the base, clamped them on, and that way I could put the garage in um, and be basically square. Um, so you're just using them as a guide. But uh, again, when I'm putting the Gorilla Glue on here, I'm doing the same thing where I'm putting a, you know, not an overly thick layer, just thick enough where you can't see the paint underneath. Um, but on the outside edges, I'm trying to make sure I don't have much glue on the outside because I'm trying to minimize the amount of uh, squeeze out I get. And for clamping, I basically just put a scrap piece of plywood from something else and piled it with dumbbells. So nobody's working out with these tonight, but that's okay. That's enough force to allow it to bond. You just have to have patience and let it cure. Um, these scrap pieces were offcuts from other stuff that I shaped into something that I thought could pass as a fuel pump, a gas pump. Um, but a little, I put these little strips on the side of it though that you see because I wanted more surface area for glue. I figured if I just had a little simple tab sticking up, it wouldn't survive very long. Okay, so there I'm picking up the whole thing with just the garage, so the glue is definitely good. I gotta paint that up yet. Um, but that's going to go about there, and uh, now we're going to put on the roof, and we're going to put on the ramp. Well, we'll just put the roof on for now and glue the car wash down. I'm doing the same thing as I did when I put it to the base. Um, plenty of glue on top, but I'm trying to keep the outside edges thin so I don't have that much squeeze out um, where the glue squeezes out once you uh, kind of clamp it down. Um, but you need to line it up square and be happy with it because once you you know put the weights on and clamp it up, it's done. It's going to it's gonna stay where it is. Um, but again, use your clamps. Enjoy them. Um, and uh, if you have a couple of dumbbells around, use those too. But uh, again, wait a day um, and uh, then come back and, uh, you know, pull them off. And this thing is, again, it's going to be solid and strong. I was really, really, really impressed with that construction adhesive. I've used it before, but I've never really tested it. Um, you know, and for its ability to hold little three-eighths inch uh, thick plywood to that was, I thought that was cool. Here I'm cutting a couple of strips down. I kind of thought the roof should have a, uh, um, like a little barrier that I could glue down. So I just cut some strips from the plywood I had left, painted them up white and glued them on down. Uh, so not too scientific, but uh, uh, it gets the job done. Um, uh, for gluing the uh, ramp on, I, I only applied glue to the actual roof and then to the bottom of the ramp. Um, and again, this is an attempt to minimize the amount of squeeze out I would have. Now, for putting this on there, um, you put it on the roof first and then bring it down to the base. And then you actually have to, I just held it really firmly for a whole minute um, to let it kind of grip and set up just a little bit. Uh, the instructions on the glue say that's what you need to do, um, and so that's what I did. I, I tried a few ways to uh, clamp it down um, without gluing just to see if I could do it and, you know, make like a Rube Goldberg device, and I really couldn't. Um, so I figured I'd just, just use a brute force and try to hold it there, and then I know no one's going to come down and touch it later. So I put a, little, a few clamps on the one border because it was a little warped. The other one is just going to get the uh, scrap plywood and the dumbbell treatment. Um, and again, we're just going to wait, come back and uh, take it off. And now it's done. Now we just have to do a little bit more painting. But first, I'm going to put some felt pads on the bottom. This thing is going to be played with upstairs on hardwood floors, on tile floors, and I figured it's better if it slides around on felt. And then at the very end, we decided to paint a road on the front and some parking uh, parking lines. So using some painter's tape, me and my boy took turns uh, painting that white. We put some lines up here. 
I used uh, scrap supply wood as guides to try to at least keep one edge really clean. And then I decided to put the little yellow lines in, use a little painter's tape, and that worked out really nice too. Um, and this is really kind of like the last step on the whole thing. Um, now we're basically done, and it is time to play with it, um, which, you know, um, I can't really tell you like how excited my son was for this though. He kept, he would constantly ask to, can we go work on the garage? Can we go work on the garage? You know, because we glue it up, we'd have to wait a day to do the next thing. Or we'd paint something, have to wait for the paint to dry. He just really wanted to play with it, um, and uh, my daughter was the same way. And again, this is all from one two by two uh, sheet of plywood. It's a very low cost project with minimal tools required. That hopefully is going to provide a lot of uh, rainy day fun for my children. Um, so that's basically uh, pretty much about it. I mean, I'll let the camera run and you can see him playing with it a little bit more. But uh, this is a little different video for our channel. A lot of other stuff is plant based, and, but uh, this one was kind of cool. I figured we'd, uh, you know, let it go, but or you know, put it on here because it was a yeah, decent sized project when you involve your kids because it makes everything take a little longer, but. Uh, they had so much fun doing it that, uh, I mean, I hope that uh, Sam remembers it forever. I'm, I'm pretty sure he will. He's old enough, too. He liked it enough. Um, but I bet they'll be playing with this toy for uh, at least five years, uh, hopefully more. So that's pretty much it from me. Uh, if you got any questions, uh, ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Again, all the plans and everything is at our website, and I'll put a link to some of the more pertinent tools below. Um, and... Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you watching. Have a good one. Fun.